Hi beautiful souls, it's Tan back here with another moon sign video for you and today we're going to talk about the Leo moon sign. Before you jump right in and watch this video, I would recommend that you watch my moon sign introduction video first um, so that you can kind of understand where the theories and the concepts that I'm going to be talking about in this video actually comes from. So I'm going to provide a link to that video up there so you can click on it, go watch and then come back to this video. So the way I'm going to proceed with this video is that first I'm going to talk a little bit about the moon sign as an infant. So the Leo moon as an infant, what their infancy needs were. Um, and then we're going to talk about the relationship of this moon sign with their mother and how that's influenced them. Then I'm going to discuss a little bit about habit patterns that is a result of your conditioning during infancy, which is actually not your real individual which is actually not your individual emotional habit patterns. So this would be kind of the lower vibration of this moon sign. And then we'll discuss about a little bit about how to kind of get out of this habit pattern, and kind of decondition it so that you can be at the higher vibration of your moon sign. And then we'll discuss about what it's like to be in a relationship with a Leo moon. And I'll be ending it off with the highest potential, the higher vibration of the Leo moon and what that looks like. So when the Leo moon was an infant, they were given a lot of care and attention by the mothering figure. This doesn't necessarily mean that they had all of their emotional needs met, but it could mean that um, emotional and physical needs. Um, it could just also mean that the mothering figure was just there or was present when the child needed something. But maybe they didn't quite hand over the right needs, but at least they made sure that you felt good. Do you know what I mean? Maybe they distracted you by giving you toys instead of a bottle. Hence, it made you feel like entertainment could be a sign of love. Without kind of taking into account aspects to the moon, a Leo moon indicates someone who uses praise and compliments um, in order to feel better. Let's say you get on their bad side and, you know, most of the time if you, if you tell them, you know, what a great friend or brother or sister they've been to you, um, they kind of be okay. But, of course, you'd have to say it genuinely. As a Leo moon, it is not easy for you to change your emotional habit patterns because Leo is a fixed sign. There's very little that can get you down and you have unmatched willpower. But at the same time, you kind of rely on your um, own self-love and others' proof of their love for you to get by. So what a Leo Moon person might do if they're not receiving that kind of proof of love from others, they might want to balance things out by bumping up their own self-love. This can be healthy most of the times, but there are times when one person, you know, when you need to like apologize or admit your mistakes or maybe give something to others without asking anything in return. And this can be hard for a Leo moon who has bumped up their self-love so high that admitting their mistakes or giving for the sake of giving can almost feel like a threat to their own self-love they're kind of protecting themselves because innately there's some insecurity and it is quite sad to see an insecure leo moon because of all the moon signs this one has the most potential to be in innately secure loving and entertaining but that's precisely why our ingrained habits can kind of dim our light habits are not who we really are and bad habits is made, well, is unconsciously created for self-protection when we feel that the walls that we have created for ourselves um, to protect ourselves is threatened, to be broken down by outside forces. And if it breaks, the self-love that we have created inside this wall will no longer exist. You see how our mind works? But if that's the case, then that's not real love. Accepting that we have done someone wrong is actually an act of self-love. 
it's not about being at the highest vibration of oneself from day one because no one was born high. It's about allowing the self to become vulnerable, allowing the self to transform and to grow to its highest vibration throughout life. Giving that to yourself is the potential of self-love. Each time you make a mistake and you apologize, you become more humble. You make someone else feel better and you know exactly what to do next time so you don't make the same mistakes. You're growing, you're evolving and transforming. So if you have a Leo moon or any moon sign that I talk about in the series, you know the habit patterns needs to be changed. The ingrained habit patterns need to be changed. If you're in a relationship with the Leo moon, one of the most important things to remember is that they are very independent people and they don't bend to you. So let's say that you did something wrong by them, you need to be the one to come to them and talk to them about it. Otherwise, they can be perfectly okay with just saying goodbye to you and then going off on their own way. Okay, well I think that's a pretty obvious situation, but let's say you got into a fight with them, okay? And you didn't do anything wrong, you felt that you didn't do anything wrong, and maybe they felt they didn't really do anything wrong either. Then in this situation, you also need to really be the one to kind of come to them first. Come around first. Kind of like, you know, let's talk about this, you know what I mean? Because they won't and they can be stubborn. But if you come to them, they'll be completely open to compromise, to openly talk with you and work things out. And they will be honest about it. The second thing that you need to know is that Leo Moons are in a relationship with you with expectations. I don't know if you're familiar with MBTI, the Mayor's Briggs, but um, when I think about Leo Moon people or people who have a lot of Leos in their chart, I think of the type, the ESFJ. Anyways, they will do things for you, and sometimes with grandeur, and they will worship you and make you feel good and important and special. But you need to do the same to them. Or you need to kind of go out of your way to show them how much you appreciate what they've done for you. And you need to do it with grandiosity. Most Leo moons like to entertain people, they like to sing for you, tell you stories, dance for you and things like that, entertain you. So when they do, you just need to make sure that you appreciate it and show them of your appreciation and actually watch them. Um, it's not hard to make Leo moons happy. So with a, with a bit of habit adjustment that all the moon signs can do, the Leo moon can be at their highest energy vibration. You, as a Leo moon, can give love with purity and not ask for anything in return. Trust me, even if you don't ask for anything in return, people will appreciate you a lot. They may not show it in the sense that you want them to show it, but trust me, they love and appreciate you from inside. You can be that person that really understands true love of the self and you can influence and motivate others to love themselves, to take care of themselves. You can really see people's potentials and you can bring that out in them. But more than being a support or an influencer, you are a star. You need to be able to bring a smile on people's faces, uplift their spirits and make them soar. That's my take on the Leo moon. If you have a Leo moon, please leave a comment below. Let me know what your experiences have been and have you deconditioned your ingrained habit patterns yet? And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And thank you very much to all of the people who have subscribed and are currently um, coming along with me on this astrology journey of self-growth. Thank you so much. Bye.